Dulce is a game about sweets. We are going to plant and harvest beans, send them to shops, and they are going to make some really good stuff. Also, it looks like in the game we will build a fairly sustainable chain of shops because what a shop doesn't use is sent to the next shop that may use it, create new byproducts, and maybe even send those byproducts to somebody else. So you try not to be wasteful. The game is a multiplayer solo and it means to be so. It is basically a solo game of which you're gonna get uh, four copies so that four people can play it at the same time. It is even more multiplayer solo, like really solo, than uh, say Ark Nova, a game that has been very successful lately and that also falls within the category in which the existence of other players uh, sets a score that you're trying to beat, but also, for example, determines when the game is over. Here, the game will always be exactly 20 turns, there is absolutely no interaction, every player has their own copy of what you see here, which is a deck of cards and a board, and the deck of cards is the same for everybody, and so, uh, that's it, everybody's playing their own solos, you get four copies of it, and play for 20 turns, and at the end, you check the score. There's no adjustment if you're playing true solo because the multiplayer is a solo, meaning if you're playing solo, you're playing the game exactly as you would and just there is a fixed score that you're trying to beat. So you have a board here with four starting cafes and then also with a grid, I think you can see it, a grid there where you will be planting um, crops so that you can generate beans. And there are four kinds of beans there that you'll be planting, plus these are the cubes that represent eggs. And uh, again, the color is not... The, 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 very thematic, sure, but the colors are not as different from one another as I would like them to be. We have a track here on which we're gonna keep track of our score, and I don't know if you can see it, on the track we also have a little chicken. That's possibly the first chicken meeple. Oh, you say meeple chicken that I have and during the game when there is something that you don't know what to do with basically like a resource that you cannot place or you cannot use entirely that will produce then you feed the chicken so you move the chicken by one space and then you can spend three chicken points I guess to mm, pop make an egg a square egg for chicken and the egg is a wild resource, it can be used to replace any of the other four. Each player has an identical deck of cards, and these are shuffled at the beginning of the game. Now, if you're playing with other players, only one player needs to shuffle their, their deck, but then um, that player will draw a card, and everybody will look for the same card, so everybody will have exactly the same card. Again, everybody's playing with exactly the same situation, same resources, same everything. So, as you can see, these shops have different kind of beans that they can accept. And also, you may have noticed now that there is a variable number of rings around those those beans. So, for example, this one has three... Re three uh, see, you can't even count. That one has two rings. This one has one, and the ones on the board all have three. Also, the back of the cards represents uh, different crops that the card will generate if you place it on your grid. So, how does it work? We have 24 cards, uh, four are randomly removed at the beginning of the game. Then again, the active player, or just you if you're playing solo, picks up a card, everybody else uh, draws uh, the active player draws a card, everybody else gets the same card, and then you need to place it. There are three things that you can do with it. You can simply build a cafe, which is, and you do so by placing that next to your board. As simple as that. I get this other one. Oh, looks cool. I'm also going to build a cafe based on it. But remember, there's also another thing that you can do, which is uh, to place it with the back face up, and you place it on your personal board. You, if you, you can, if you want, cover one of your starting cafes, but then you don't have it anymore. When you place a card on your board that way, it immediately generates the crops indicated there, and you place the corresponding symbols there. Now, later it's possible 
it is entirely possible indeed that you will place a card over another crop and, and incident again you can place it any way you want as long as it matches the grid it can cover previous crops and <clears throat> here's the idea if you place a card over a previous resource that is discarded and it is used to feed the chicken also, if you place an icon on top of an identical icon, whether there is something in it or not, it doesn't matter if it's uh, occupied or not, if you place an icon over an, an identical icon, then you get to place two crops of that kind. And so that's, uh, that's how you will produce the beans that will go to your, to your cafes. Another action that you can take is to harvest the beans, send them and send them to the to your cafes. And so let's see if we have a bunch of cafes there out already. Now, to do so, when the card of the or the turn is declared, you simply choose to discard it. When you discard a card, again, you can take the action of harvesting, uh, followed by scoring. And that's its own mini game. That's definitely a, a digression, quite a break from you know taking a card and place it down. It takes a lot longer. You can collect any and all uh, any and all crops from a single from a single row. And I want to show you a variety of things. So let's do it that way. Suppose that this is my situation. Oh no, I built over a cafe there. It doesn't matter. So you can collect any and all seats from a single row or column and suppose that I collect these ones. Now, yeah, I can place them on any symbol uh, that matches that crop. Uh, coffee with coffee and vanilla with vanilla and so on regardless of the number of rings the number of rings will become important in a little while so I can put that one there for example and this one here and ah, that one can go there and this one goes here so far so good you place all of the ones that you that you uh, collected if you can the ones that you cannot place are used to feed the chicken as often things do in this game. Every time you score a cafe, you score a point. So, for example, I score that one, that scores me a point. Now, once I score a cafe, I remove the, 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 the beans that were there, and I can move them to a cafe that, that takes the same symbol, the same type, and has a lower number of rings. For example, I had a cacao there that had three rings, now I move it to a cafe that has the same icon, but only two rings. And that by doing so, now I can score that cafe also, because that also has all of its icons uh, fulfilled. So I score a point because of that. And I can transfer these, if I have, to uh, places that take, oh, they take the same resource with fewer rings. Of course, when you score a cafe and you to do so, you use the resource that only had one ring, that one had nowhere to go, and so that one is simply discarded back to the supply. If after scoring a cafe, there is nowhere where you can place your, your uh, beans, then those are simply discarded. And so for the not discarded part, uh, pardon me, they are fed to the chicken. Suppose, for example, this one, I scored this one, that gives me a point, then I place it in that cafe here because from vanilla three ring I get to two rings of vanilla that scores that one that means now this one was a one ring that was scored so it goes back to the supply this one uh, could go to a sing a vanilla icon with a single ring around it but I don't have it so it is discarded but since I didn't use the product entirely it fits the chicken this is the idea. Uh, each turn you receive a random card uh, which you can place next to your board to build your cafes. You can put it, flipping it with the field side up to create crops. So you can discard it to collect crops and score them by placing things in your cafes, scoring them and then moving things around. The idea seemed very promising, very interesting. This is definitely a 
an engine building game and it looks like a short one and I don't mind because I said this in other reviews of engine building games I like building the engine is like right there in the name but once the engine has been built uh, very often then it becomes pretty repetitive and if you're playing a competitive game of that kind if your engine takes a lot longer to implement and gives a lot more stuff other people feel left out and so I like engine buildings that are pretty pretty short and sweet well this one is sweet at least in the theme for sure and it's short enough yet <laughs> It's a little too long for what it has to offer. Meaning, um, it's, uh, the first couple of turns are cool because you're trying to build an engine, but also feels like pretty random and feels pretty like, I don't know. Uh, these resources are all equivalent, so I can put a three ring in a certain in peanuts, or I can put a three rings in vanilla. It doesn't feel like I am building a different path. So at the beginning, the first couple of turns, you'll get a couple of cards with a three and a two, and a couple of cards with a number of rings. And then you start, and, and sometimes you do them more efficiently than others, mind you, but you don't feel like a huge difference. Um, Again, because all the beans uh, work exactly the same. And then you start producing crops, because you need those. And when it's time to use your engine, again, sometimes it works a little bit better, a little bit not so good. But the point is that by the second half of the game, your engine is pretty much set. You're, you're not going to be able to change it much, because you got 10 cards left. So, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to spend two of those to create new cafes and then I need to spend three or four more uh, to fuel up my production and then I'm um, yes I can, I can do that but I don't the second part of the game your engine is not gonna change much and so you're just basically repeating the things that you did in the first half of the game the game again is short is like maybe 20 minutes of which I would say 10 are taking standard turns and 10 is, is scoring and moving things around. Again, that's that's really what you're actually going to spend a lot of the time doing. And after you did it a couple of times, move this, move that, move it here. Again, it since all the beans work exactly the same, um, and you're just going from 3 to 2 to 2 to 1, discard this, discard that. There isn't really a moment of thrill or, or excitement. After a while, the process of, of using your engine, which should be when the game is the most exciting and fun, just feels a little bit repetitive. And that's not super exciting. And again, so that makes for a, for a uh, solitaire game, which is short and looks really good. The production is super nice. But it's just not particularly exciting to play because uh, it feels pretty abstract and the main mechanic, the main idea is repetitive. Just use the same engine over and over again and again it feels just very generic. I cannot even imagine having any reason to play this game against other humans because I don't mind multiplayer solos but of course there's always the risk that they will cause more waiting. The only way a multiplayer solo really works for me if it's there's a lot going on that is simultaneous so that um, the presence of other people does not enhance my game in any way. That's just the way it is. It doesn't. Uh, but it may worsen it if other players are taking too long to play. And so multiplayer solo, very often the risk is, is a solo game in which I have to wait. And the risk here I can see would be very, very serious because if my turn is... Uh, Oh, okay. I'll I'll do this. And that may be my turn. But your turn is let me produce these beans, let me put them there, let me place them here, score, 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 put an egg there, produce another egg. The eggs are used to fill the chains in your production. So that place taking that their scoring phase, which is pretty long, while I'm just sitting there, I don't see a lot of a good reason and the following turn maybe I'm just collecting some resources and another of my three opponents takes a scoring turn. I don't see any advantage in playing the game uh, multiplayer when it is a true solo and multiplayer would only add more waiting. So this is my assessment of Dulce. I found it not particularly exciting to play solo and I don't see any reason why I would play multiplayer.